This is Musings of the Shy podcast. I'm your host, Rosia Shy. Rosia Shy here with another episode. This is episode 134. Low rise. Uh, block size lower. Um, is staying the same. This is about a proposal, or I should say a proposal and the status quo within the block size debate. Our ongoing discussion about uh, the contentious, increasingly contentious uh, debate about raising the block size limit, how to do it, uh, whether we should do it, uh, what's going to happen. Um, On this episode, we're going to discuss a proposal by one of the uh, Bitcoin core developers, Luke Jr., and about a number of people that have stated that we perhaps should stay at the one megabyte size and not increase it. Um, Some are saying that all, and some are saying just not at this time. But before we get into that discussion, uh, the news. This comes from Cointelegraph by William uh, Sudberg. We plan to open 5,000 Bitcoin ATMs in Europe in 2017. Bitlish. Uh, Bitcoin ATM provider Bitlish was the first to open a bona fide BTM in Russia, but its expansion plans are likely to get the market talking. Despite the growing presence of BTMs in Europe, usage is still limited. Not in, in considerable fees as well as a lack of general consumer understanding means that online options remain the go-to source for both novice and experienced traders to exchange crypto for fiat and vice versa. UK-based British thus a surprise Surprise when one of the brand machines opened in Russia's second city, St. Petersburg, closely followed by another. Both were a result of a decision by the company's local partner, who gained an opportunity to open the, there rather than the capital of Moscow. This year, I said to see much more from British with an eye opening 5,000 machines, Bitlish, with an eye opening 5,000 machines planned Europe wide in 2017 alone. Currently, fewer than 200 machines are listed as operational on Bitcoin ATM Finder. Coin ATM radar. The country with the most machines is UK with 68. And then an article has an interview here. So, St. Peter's Open Russia. Uh, in the interview with Coin Telegraph, Bitlish Max Gerner discussed more teasers about the plans and, and about what and what the future has in store. What made you choose St. Petersburg as the first Russian location for a machine? Uh, Max King. We have several ATM partners across the world, and we did not install ATMs by ourselves. It's up to our partners to decide what spot to be used. Our first partner in Russia had an opportunity to open up in this location in St. Petersburg, and it was his sole decision. South Front, Russia, next target. Are you planning to add others in South St. Petersburg and or elsewhere? Yes, we plan to expand through our partner network across Russia and Europe. We look forward to connecting up to 300 ATMs in GIS Commonwealth of Independent States, at 5,000 in Europe this year. We also spread into the south of Russia in the coming months. Are you confident about the future legislative environment in Russia concerning Bitcoin and altcoins? We believe Russia should soon provide a legislative framework enabling businesses and people to trade in the legal and acceptable form, leaving the cryptocurrencies out of the gray area as it used to happen in Russia. We consider the kiosk a step forward to achieving this goal. Uh, Europe is priority. To what extent do regulatory shifts impact on ATM operators? There's a direct impact. Establishing a clear regulatory regime should boost kiosk business. The sector is quite a developed one in Russia. I recommend our partners to fulfill the existing requirements that if cryptocurrencies were regulated as an incumbent pay system. Where are, you, where are you currently planning to sell and provide services outside of Russia? We are not oriented to Russia only and already have some partners in the United States in Latin America, but Europe is going to be our priority. We accept our orders for ATMs with a very competitive price of uh, €1,200 Euro per unit. If so, are you looking for current, uh, country representatives? Yes. As our business model in the kiosk area relies on authorized partners, we can probably have a country representative responsible for business development in the concrete uh, region. Uh, anyone interested can apply for that through our website and we check on out all initiatives. So, Bitcoin ATM coming to Europe soon. And that is it for Bitcoin news. On to the topic at hand, which is lowering the box size rate or the status quo, keeping everything at one megabyte. 
for, so first with the lowering of the block size. This article comes from um, CoinDesk. Why bigger might not be better for Bitcoin scaling by Corin Fios. And this came out February of this year. The block size debate, long, the long one of the defining challenges hanging over the Bitcoin tech community, took an interesting twist last month. A year-long discussion about how best to scale the function, functioning $15 billion economic uh, network mid-flight. The debate has large, largely been characterized by a face-off between those who want to increase the one mega block size via an efficient improvement, efficiency improvement called SegWit, and those who want to change the hard-coded block size limit to 2 megabytes or more. You notice that so far, neither side has called for a block size decrease. But that's exactly the viewpoint in the Bitcoin improvement proposal submitted to the Bitcoin dev mailing list by Bitcoin core developer Luke Dash Jr. in the message title, Three Hard Fork Related Bits. Specifically, Dash proposed suggesting a temporary block size reduction to 30 gigabytes, depending on the date that the bit was activated, and slowly rising in a yearly increase to a limit of 30, 31 megabytes in 2045. The timing of the proposal released on uh, January 27th came just days after a huge increase in transactions backlog saw unconfirmed transactions spike to over 60,000 K before returning to lower levels. In a more detailed proposal, Dash Jr. cited the amount of disk space demanded by the blockchain, curling around 100 gigabytes as a significant disincentive for anyone wanting to run a node, hardware that stores the full ledger history. Dash writes, the regular occurrence to see new users complain about the time to set up a node and established members of the community recommend downgrades to non whole wallet software, which results in a new user gaining Bitcoin as a currency but not the security of Bitcoin itself and compromising the integrity of the network as a whole by widespread usage. The remarks are not surprising as the viability of a Bitcoin node network has emerged as one of the more prominent political footballs in the debate. Without a vibrant node network, developers fear, fear that the operation of Bitcoin ledgers will fall into the hands of a few big operators and thus defeating the purpose of a decentralized payment network. Cool reception. Although the proposed redu reduction is what has garnered most attention, the proposal actually calls for an annual block size increase of 17% per year is intended to keep pace with the growth rate and bandwidth seen in recent years. But critics of the ensuing discussion have suggested this figure is overly conservative and that it does not account for the nonlinear pace of technology change, especially when projected into the future. In general, the proposal has seen little support from the wider community, with most responding on the mailing list expressing skepticism towards the proposal. The block size decrease might not have been the sole point of contention however. Dash Jr.'s proposal requires what's called a hard fork, a way to upgrade the blockchain that can split the network if not all participants agree. Even this definition it seems remain, remains contentious. Bitcoin contributor Johnson Liu responded to, to argue that neither a block size increase nor a decrease is desirable. For me, both approaches just show the lack of creativity and lack of responsibility he said. He further expressed the common view that a hard fork would be too dangerous right now, adding the one megabyte here, no matter no matter you like it or not, it's the current consensus. Any attempt to change the limit up or down requires a wide consensus of the whole community, which might be difficult. That might explain why the modified version of the proposal, which removed the block size decrease released on February 5th, developed by Andrew Chow, failed to generate enthusiasm from list members. Some support. Discussion, discussing this proposal and the response with CoinDesk, Dash Jr. cited a Twitter poll that showed 20% support for a block size decrease, far from a majority by a large enough number to merit serious consideration. However, he also pointed out the difficulty of moving forward, forward with modifications to the network when a supermajority of hash and power is required to accept them. He said many seem to think that think seven years before the increase began was too far out. A poll showed the majority prefer it sooner, but that some polls show that 10% oppose any hard fork that increases the block size limit ever which basically kills any chance of such a proposal gaining consensus. In light of the community response, Dash Jr. said that he did not intend to develop the bit draft any further at the present time and would not be pursuing it to the point of receiving an official proposal number. If there really is a 20% support for the reduction of the block size, then some of Dash Jr.'s ideas may still reemerge through other channels in the future. The, with no bit signed to it, but um, the initial Proposal is consensus, so the layer is consensus, and it's a hard fork. Came out January of this year, 
at the abstract. The block size limit is reduced to a reasonable safe value, optional, and gradually increases over time, eventually expanding beyond the current limit. Specification. Upon the activation, the block size limit is replaced by a function below and applied to the median of the timestamp of the previous 11 blocks. Its emblem is a series of block size steps, one every 97 days and ending at just under 30, 31 megabytes in 2045 April, with each step increasing the maximum block size by 4.4%, allowing an overall growth of 17.7% per year. Uh, this is similar to another proposal which talked about a gradual increase from one megabyte at this growth rate. Uh, the initial size limit upon activation depends on when it's activated. For example, if in January 2018, it would begin at 35, 35.6K, or if in 20, 2024 June, it would begin at just over one megabyte. The concept of block weight is introduced and modified all witness data, including both script, transaction, segregated witness data is measured at weight unit, one weight, while other data in the block is measured at 4 W. The weight, the weight of the block may not exceed double the size limit in bytes. The maximum size of transactions strip of witness data is limited to one megabyte. Uh, so the deployment of the BIP stages, so basically just how the blocks are, are compact together, you can't have something more than one megabyte with it, even with uh, segregated witness applied to this um, proposal. Deployment. The BIP is to be deployed in two stages. Stage one, the first stage is to deploy the full node software deactivated. This requires the consensus from the entire Bitcoin community and ought to be evaluated by the release manager of each full node implementation before release. All full node, all full node implementation must deploy the change before 2024 or the proposal is deemed to have failed. Since this stage only applies to growth of the block size limit, not a rejection far in advance of its effective date, and should not in any way impede the effort of others to increase or decrease it faster or sooner. BIPs, you know, he's referring to the BIPs uh, in the hundreds, or you can substantially alter the very concept of decentralized consensus, DU. It's hoped the proposal will, will be uncontroversial and thus able to retain consensus for the entire community as the very least, as a better failure scenario than the currently one megabyte forever, or two to three megabyte forever with SegWit. Stage two, after consensus is established, but not necessarily before all nodes have deployed compatible software, so long as it still occurs before 2024, the BIP may be activated using BIP9, using the name TBD, and hit TBD. Uh, for, for Bitcoin main time, the BIP9 start time, so basically how it will be implemented and from the testnet into the mainnet. So the motivation. Uh, many people want to see Bitcoin scale over time, allowing the increased number of transactions on the blockchain. It will come to it at an increased cost of the ecosystem. Bandwidth, processing, storage for relay noise nodes, as well as the impact on propagating speed of blocks on the network. But technology also improves over time. When all technologies depend on, on have improved as well as their availability in the market, there's no reason why Bitcoin's fundamental transaction rate cannot improve proportionally. However, at the same time, the current rate of blockchain growth is demonstrably too high for many users. Full node count and percentage continue to drop, with most cited reason being the blockchain size related. Miners are de facto skipping validated checking of blocks before mining on top of them, and the total cost to take a new node for the first time is growing significantly faster than technology improvements to reduce such costs. It is a regular occurrence to see new users complain about the time to set up a node and establish members of the community recommending downgrading to non full wallet software, which results in new users gaining Bitcoin as a currency but not securing the Bitcoin itself and compromises the integrity of the network as a whole by widespread usage. Currently, the consensus rule is placed the limit size of blocks to uh, one megabyte. Changing the presently requires a hard forking change, one that will require every full node in the network to implement the new rule. The new chain created by those chain nodes will be rejected by old nodes, so this is effectively requested to the ecosystem to migrate to a new and an incompatible network. During this whole con Controversy exists a dangerous to the network and the ecosystem. This places the expansion of the block size limit several years out so as to avoid controversy and give plenty of time to upgrade. Upgrading can be done even if the BIP does not activate several years to, to potential controversy over the short term. Reduction and such consensus for the deployment should be determined only by long term block size increase. Uh, rationale When is going to increase in the block size limit upset market forces? Because every increase, including the first, is only 4.4%, risk from large market or technology changes is minimized. 
Why should the current block size limit be reduced to merely uh, 300k? Currently, the block size is approximately 100 gigabytes. If we assume 17.17% rate of technology improvement, maintaining the current cost allows the growth of 17.7 .7 gigabytes over the next year. According and across the expected 52596 blocks in a year, this leaves every each block 337k bit to work. Because it will be increasing the block size limit over time, this is rounded down to 30k feet. Note that the block weight limit is also rounded up. 300k is only used for block size limit should, be, should the proposal be active prior to April of 2017, which you know it didn't happen. It is deemed too small, activation can simply be delayed until the desired limit is reached, retaining the current block size slash weight limit until that time. What is the p purpose of the choosing growth rate? The growth rate of 17.7% per year is consistent with the average growth of bandwidth in the last year, which seems to be an important bottleneck. If over time the 7.7% annual block size growth factor is beyond what actual technology improvements offer, the intention should be to soft fork to a smaller block size limit. The growth rate rate leads to the new block size limit exceeding the current limit only after seven years, with which time exit nodes using BitFix Me will relax their own block size rules, making this bit a soft fork rather than a hard fork. Uh, backwards compatibility. With this algorithm, the block size may exceed the current limit during 2024 20, June. Several years is sufficient time for all nodes to update, so long as the proposal extension is beyond current limit has consistency by then. Okay. So uh, we'll get into it a second after we read the Merkle article here. So this is by uh, Mark. New bit propo proposes a block size speed. Yes, you heard right. Luke Dash Jr., a Bitcoin Core developer, has issued a new bit earlier today suggesting Bitcoin decreases block size limit to a third of what it currently is. The, this bit proposed is a hard fork in which, co which case the Bitcoin block size limit would be reduced to 30 kilobytes. I mean, at 30, but 300 kilobytes. Uh, the first thought that might come to your head is that the proposal is pure insanity. Why would we want to decrease the Bitcoin's block size any further when blocks are already full and users have to wait over 10 hours for their transactions to confirm? Unless, of course, they use a hefty money fee. However, this proposal focuses on a different issue that is looming for Bitcoin users and node operators. The current size of Bitcoin blockchain is approaching 100 gigabytes, assuming the average person has a, at least one terabyte hard drive. In order to run a Bitcoin core, one would have to dedicate roughly 10% of their hard drive space. The huge size of the blockchain and the amount of time it takes to set up a Bitcoin node is a main, main deterrent for users who are looking to get more involved with cryptocurrency. When one starts up a Bitcoin core for the first time, it sees it will take a week or longer to download the blockchain. Bitcoin seems very unattractive. For example, if you take a look at Bitcoin's Reddit community, you'll see that they have over 200,000 readers. However, there's only around 5,000 nodes currently operating in the Bitcoin ecosystem. Using that data, we can estimate that less than 2.5% of Bitcoin users run in a Bitcoin node. That statistic is quite discomforting. Furthermore, Bitcoin nodes require a substantial amount of bandwidth in order to operate. It's only understandable that many users don't want to sacrifice their internet fees for the blockchain. The benefits of running a Bitcoin node. There are many benefits to running your own Bitcoin node. Running a node provides you with a complete trustless as having your own copy of the ledger that you validate, meaning that you don't need to trust a third party. Furthermore, by receiving and sending transactions from your own node, nobody has the power to stop your transactions or refuse to relay them, granting you censorship resistance and permissionlessness. Moreover, an individual node creates privacy. If you use a third party site to check the balance of your address, the site can de-anonymize you by linking your IP address to the courier. A node can also provide you with improved performance and it is much, much faster to query a blockchain through the network versus using a third-party site. Last but not least, a Bitcoin node improves protection for the Bitcoin ecosystem. If you are a Bitcoin investor, it is in your best interest to protect that investment, and setting up a Bitcoin node is, set up, is a set in the right direction. Why decrease the block size? We're going to talk about nodes and hardware and bandwidth because that is one of the con another contentious part besides the the, uh, the heart of the matter of just raising the, the block size limit. Um, as with this proposal stated, not everyone is running a full node. They're not willing to sacrifice their internet speeds. They're not willing to sacrifice their hard drives for the purpose of Bitcoin. 
And if you're into other cryptocurrencies, then you would have to run a node for you know every single crypto, and you, not everyone has the space, the time, or the means to do so. So that is a legitimate contentious you know point that raising the block size is going to either price out or push out people that can't have the complete and full unfettered access of Bitcoin. But at the same time, you know, bandwidth speed and hard drive space and all of that has um, increased over time. And there's people running Raspberry Pis as full nodes. So there's a give and take with with both of um, these things where some saying that it can and it's possibly done and it's not as uh, big of a sacrifice as people are proposing. And, there, and then, then, then there's the reality where, in some cases, it is. If you look at other nations outside of the, you know, the Western sphere, you know, running a 100 gigabyte system is, or program, I should say, is, is a lot. This brings us to our next question, why should we decrease the block size? The answer is simple. Luke believes that the current rate of blockchain growth is demonstrably too high for many users. Meaning for the average person, the bandwidth and the storage provided today is not high enough to justify running a node. In other words, when the average show first finds out about Bitcoin and downloads the original Bitcoin client, he realizes it takes way too long to sync the blockchain. After consulting with users on Reddit, Bitcoin Talk, and everyone points Joe to use a light wallet, such as a Electrum or Multibit, doing so, Joe loses the security that Bitcoin provides, thereby, thereby compromising the integrity of the network. It's important for new users to be able to seamlessly start using Bitcoin the way it was attended by Satoshi. However, this time it takes to set up the node is a long-lasting issue. While I do think that's important, if Bitcoin was to become a cashless system, by that principle, then there wouldn't be mobile wallets because they're not running full nodes. Many of them are, you know, third-party apps. There's that factor, too. This is why Luke Dash Jr. proposes the scale Bitcoin back a bit in order to let the true potential shine. It's, it's like saying it goes uh, one step back, two steps forward. By reducing Bitcoin's block size, the rate at which the blockchain grows will slow down dramatically. This will allow current technology to, cap to catch up to the point where it takes an hour to sync a 100 gigabyte blockchain rather than a week. Uh, using the average growth of bandwidth for the last years, uh, Luke assembled a 70.7 so we're going to kind of cover this. Uh, what makes this proposal so attractive is the fact that it can be tested with no obligation prior to activation. Miners who can simply limit blocks to 30k kilobytes with no strength attached, such a change does not require a hard fork, and is simply setting a further limit to the amount of data that can be packed into the block. This will allow miners to be, be back out of this bit if they find it causes problems, making it the first block size solution allowing a test drive. Could this proposal be implemented? Limiting the block size further will create even higher transaction fees for users, so great benefit for the miners, uh, bit, making this bit quite controversial. As if Bitcoin fees aren't high enough already, unless more improvements come along, users will have to pay triple the amount if this proposal is implemented. To add insult to energy injury, miners having that, have everything to gain by implementing smaller blocks as transaction fees will skyrocket, bringing the miners even more profit. Bitcoin transaction fees have been on a steady climb since the block started filling up in 2016. In fact, the average amount of transaction fees per day was roughly at 40 Bitcoin, um, was trading at $380 at the time. This roughly makes $19,000 in fees per day, not a small amount to say the least. Today, the average amount of transaction fees per day is at a staggering 125 Bitcoin. At Bitcoin's current value, that, is about, that equates to 140k. As you can see, transaction fees have gone up tenfold in a single year. How much further do you think miners can push users before they decide to switch to an alternative currency? You may think it's only natural for miners to look for ways to make more money as they haven't significantly hurt their profits. This is where you are wrong. Before November, Bitcoin protocol rewarded 25 um, Bitcoins per found block. However, after the halving reward dropped to 12.5, and since the block is found every 10 minutes, that means they're on an average of 144 blocks per day. At the time, the miners were receiving over 36k bitcoins per day. That's over 1.1 million dollars. Today, miners receive an average of 18, 18k in bitcoins a day. However, given bitcoins rise in value, that equates to 1.6 million. As you can see, miners are making more money now than ever. 
back to the point of, point of this proposal being implemented, did you know that miners are the only ones that have the power to hard fork over a network? What do they have to gain by increasing the block size? Sure, they might increase Bitcoin's adoption rate as it will be cheaper and faster to send transactions, but the miners aren't betting on it. They're betting on users spending more money on trans transaction fees as that is the only alternative source of income other than block rewards. Increasing the block size will directly hurt their profits while making their job that much harder as they would need to allocate more resources and more bandwidth for larger blocks. Furthermore, miners want to avoid hard forks as they may cause in instability in the network. And if the fork results in two competing currencies like in the case of Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, that could mean a disaster for a big mining, mining farm. The proposal is different in the sense that mining farms decide to implement that they may mean a direct improvement to the profits. Furthermore, the pressure of any smaller blocks will speed up the introduction of solutions such as SegWit, Lightning Network, and um, Mimblewimble, which seems to have a much higher chance to be implemented as they do not require hard forks. At the very end of the day, it's all up to the miners to decide what bit they would like to implement, and so far they have shut down every bit that relies on increasing the block size, and maybe this time they will try it out. Uh, we're going to talk about SegWit as far as the um, block size debate, but Lightning Network and Bimbo Wimbo we will discuss after we finish um, going through everything when it comes to the block size debate because they are more like add-ons to the network as, and not necessarily have the ability to increase the block size. So here's a little bit about the history of the block size uh, choosing one megabyte. This is from Robots Fuck Yeah, all in one word. This was published May 24, 2016. Block size, the history of choosing one megabyte. The, blocks, the Bitcoin block size of one megabyte, why was that number chosen? The reason in the past may have applications to the reason in the present and future. The original code, the block size defined by the code of the max block size that is one megabyte. It first appears in the comment by Satoshi Nakamoto, July 15, 2010, and you can verify this yourself. The line of code originally co committed was and still is one megabyte. Historical context. Let's get some context around Bitcoin at this period of time. The next release day after the max size block size was introduced was version uh, 0 0.31. Change logs for the Bitcoin release don't go back to version uh, 0 0.3.1. They start at version 03.12, so the change logs don't contain any details about this change. Coincidentally, there was a request for a change logs around the time of 0 0.31 was released. Discuss of the change. What did Satoshi have to say about this change? Uh, Bitcoin dev, dev mailing list archives only go back to June 2011, so it has no records of the time the change was made. The source forge mailing list at the time says most conversations have moved to the forum, which is now at Bitcoin bitcointalk.org. All Satoshi posts on the Bitcoin forum are here. Posts around this time could be found on page 18. So there's some links um, within this article uh, indicating their location. Searching all the posts that Satoshi has performed on a locally cached version of these posts since, the web search is extremely strictly rate limited. One megabyte, nothing. One meg, nothing. Max box size, nothing relevant. Spam. The dust spam limit is the first try at intentionally trying to prevent overly small microplates like that. August 4, 2010. Uh, block size. Uh, these are the things that uh, Satoshi wrote. Uh, we can phase in the change later if we get closer to needing it. Uh, that was done October 3rd, 2010. Bandwidth. Whatever size micropayments you need will eventually be practical. I think in five or ten years, the bandwidth and storage will seem trivial. August 5th, 2010. Block data. It would be nice to keep the block data files small as long as we can. The eventual solution will not will be not to care how long big how big it gets. But for now, while it's still small, it's nice to keep it small so new users can get going faster. When I eventually implement client-only mode, that won't matter much anymore, and that was August 11, 2010. Conclusion. There's no discussion around how the max block size change was decided or how the one megabit value was derived. Span management was only considered by setting the minimum output amount called dust, not by using the max block size. Even though spam control was almost certainly the intent behind this change, it never actually stated anywhere. Considering how important this issue has recently become in Bitcoin, it seems unusual to ignore the history and instead dogmatically claim the original magnitude number is the best number. I can't I don't care whether one megabyte or isn't the best number to pick. To argue the magic number of picking is given the best solution and should be retained is not an acceptable position to hold. 
Science and engineering should be applied to arrive at an approximate at an appropriate max block size that meets the goals and objectives of the Bitcoin project. Maybe this science will conclude that one megabyte is indeed the best number to use right now. But I find hard to believe that maybe 999 kilobytes is better. Of course, engineering and science is easy to ask for, but hard to do. Let's not allow that to justify the dogma currently being espoused. And did them. There's a great discussion from, from a few months ago about this on Reddit. So, clicking on that post. So, this post on Reddit at um, our Bitcoin is from a year ago. It's put there by The Rock Mor Morton Sign. First, I want to point out that I'm not trying to argue for authority in this post. In fact, I want to try to explore the reason why Satoshi did what he did when it comes to the max block size. The Circuit Breaker and Satoshi are why the One Ring was forged and how to destroy it, Part 1, uh, is the title of the post. Before you read it in the post, please read this entire thread. It's only 11 comments, so it shouldn't take long, and I'll wait. Okay, one more thread. Last one, I promise. Don't read the whole thread, just the first two or three pages. Okay, these are the chronicle orders, September 7th through September, September 7th, 2010, September 29th, 2010, October 3rd, 2010. When did Satoshi lower the effective block size limit from 32 megabytes to 1 megabyte by introducing the max block size limit? July 15, 2010, two months prior to those threads. Please note that the comment line only lists that this disables the minimized tray on Linux because there's too many problems including a CPU peg bug. Hidden in this comment is something that has caused so much pain and misery yet was introduced with no fanfare whatsoever. Why? Seamless explains a prior input, um, our Bitcoin thread I found while researching this post. Satoshi never used IRC and rarely explained his motivations for anything. In this case, he kept the change secret and told people who discovered it to keep it quiet until it was over, but so, so that the controversy or attackers wouldn't cause havoc with the ongoing rule change. Why was someone that was developing open source innocent? The only few reasons that make sense, sabotage. Unlike it, this was Satoshi's own project or security, uh, very likely. There's been a few other times that I know of where devs have kept things quiet until after a fix was published. One example is BIP666. Fix the problem that could have caused a hard fork if the liberty triggered. Uh, SPA did not disclose the bug to the public until after BIP666 enforcement was in place. So why was it so important that Satoshi get this into the code without there being a public debate on it? And I would post it for very for similar reasons. I'm going to hold off speculating that much what was in Satoshi's head at the time of this comment. And I do not think linking to his profile at that time helps give me context. The design outlines a lightweight client that does not need the full blockchain. In the design, the PDF is called Simplified Payment Verification. The lightweight client can send and receive transactions, and you just can't generate blocks. It does not need a trusted node to verify payments, it just still verifies them itself. The lightweight client is not implemented yet, but the plan is to implement it when it's needed. For now, everyone just runs a full note, network node. I anticipate there will never be more than 100k nodes, probably less. It, was, it will reach an equilibrium where it's not worth it for more nodes to join in. The rest will be lightweight clients, which could be millions. In equilibrium size, many nodes will, will be server farms with one or two network nodes that feed the rest of the farms over in land. This particular comment was July 14, 2010, day before the max block size comment. Interestingly, interestingly he also discussed the runaway CCCU fix in the next comment, July 16. Okay, the undocumented switch minimized to tray, which reestablished the option. I have uploaded the change to SCN. To further complicate things, the flash dotting analogs in the Reddit hug of death occurred on July 11, 2010, to summarize. Flash dotting, comment July 11, 2010. Comment about never be more than 100k nodes possibly left equals July 14, 2010. Forging the one wing, and I mean max block size comment, equals July 15, 2010. Uh, Jay uh, Karzik's first thread, September 7th, 2010. Same person, second thread equals September 29th, 2010. Same person, third thread tries to destroy it with the ring with the axe, and I mean, remove max box size from the note, from the code, uh, October 3rd, 2010. The journey through mortar or how to destroy the one ring. I'll be hoping to make another post in a few days so we do, we'll be a little bit more expository and speculative. I'd like to make an aside here. To, to me, transaction spams is a DOS attack on the Bitcoin network. Even if unsuccessful or unintentional, much like Reddit hug of death. So, so she spent a lot of time, especially after the flash dotting, trying to plug DOS vectors. In fact, his last public comment was talking about how many DOS vectors still exist. Funny thing is, we, are, we aren't finished. Uh, SIGOPS exhaustion and the quadratic verification times for high input transactions still exist. I'm sure there's many more.
Um, and then he did comment or thanks for the, the tip. So let's go to his second part, if you will. So let's see, did he ever publish a part? It looks like that's not the case. So in the very beginning, when Bitcoin was established, the consensus was 32 megabytes, and then it was downgraded to one megabyte to address spam and network issues. And it was just done in a, I guess, a, a, sneaky, a sneaky manner where it wasn't really announced, so there wasn't debate. And it's been that way since. So from 2010 till now, it's, it's been one megabyte. And for most people, that's always been the case. So here's an article about uh, why the block size limit keeps Bitcoin free and decentralized. And this is one of the um, arguments for keeping it at one megabyte or even lowering it as uh, Luke, uh, Luke Jr. had proposed but never officially made into a bit. Uh, we use coins is the name of the article or the place of the article. Uh, the block size limit is what ensures everyone can participate in the Bitcoin network and ensures everyone can participate anonymously should they choose to. Some people want to remove this protection to make Bitcoin scale, but we, but can we have the best of both worlds? High transaction volumes and true decentralization with off-chain off transactions. Transcripts. Uh, we all know that Bitcoin is a secure, inflation-proof, decentralized currency. You make a transaction, it gets published to the global Bitcoin network. Bitcoin knows all around the world for that information to each other until seconds later the whole world knows about your transaction. Each node, even yours, validates the transaction and ensures it follows all the rules. Bitcoin has a built-in limit for one megabyte of data per block or, or seven transactions per second. The transaction then goes out to the one block one blockchain. As you know, Bitcoin has become very popular and unfortunately supply and demand will cause fees to increase over time, which means small value transactions just won't be practical. Easy thing to do was to have everyone change their software to accept bigger blocks all at once. Fees would go down, but you would need an expensive data center to run a node and you won't be able to do it anonymously. Mining pools will be forced to close due to rising costs and regulation. What left are large, powerful, and regulated pools controlling what transactions happen at all. And that doesn't look like a bank today that this is not the Bitcoin we know and love. We have an alternative for increasing the block size off-chain transactions. The block size stays the same, and mining stays decentralized. We still use the blockchain for large transactions, and small exchanges will be, will be handled by payment processors, which means small purchases like your morning coffee don't clog the whole system up. We can use the very same cryptograph um, we can use the very same cryptography that makes Bitcoin secure to audit off chain payment systems as well as effectively make it impossible to get away with fraud or theft. <coughs> Imagine a plexiglass bank where you can easily observe the inner workings. Unlike the complete block uh, public blockchain where you can't pick up pick who mines your transactions or who can you trust the validation, off chain transactions can be both instant, truly private and you can have complete control over who to trust. What you can do to keep Bitcoin decentralized. If you're a miner, only mine at pools to support the block size limit and ask your pool to publicly say so. If you're a user, nor anyone trying to change the Bitcoin software you use to increase the one megabyte block size and tell people you transact with that you support keeping Bitcoin decentralized and out of the hands of existing corporate systems. Remember, Bitcoin is democratic and the only way the block size can change is if you agree to let that happen. And this was written on May 16th, 2013. So really like a very, very long time ago. So that, that basically boils down. There's a couple more articles. Um, I have a link in the show notes of why people want to keep it uh, one megabyte and keep it the same. And basically what it is, is the status quo, status quo is consensus. And so you have a lot of people arguing that because they want to keep it decentralized. They don't want the centralization of nodes because of bandwidth issues, or because of hardware, because of people not being able to implement the Bitcoin protocol because they're not able to run the node because it takes a week to download uh, the Bitcoin core. You have the issue of potentially what has happened with mining where you have nodes that are mining farms. That increases the ca capacity for centralization, for regulation to happen, and then you can have things like transactions, not certain types of transactions not being propagated. And even for miners, it become more difficult because uh, they're going to have to upgrade, change their hardware, do all that, and their capacity to make money will not be as much as with the lower blockchain and with the higher fee. Uh, so these these are the different issues and and qualms with the raising the block size. Uh, lowering it would, you know, potentially keep the system decentralized, but it would significantly raise the fee. And this is why we're having these discussions and issues is it really comes down to 
what it is you're seeking from Bitcoin itself and cryptocurrency. Uh, but that is for another episode when, in which we talk about the way to Bitcoin, you know, how people Bitcoin. Is it a, a value settlement or is it digital cash? Or can it be both? Or is it not possible to, to be any of these things? Or really, what we're dealing with is a very nice experiment that potentially has, at this point in time, run its course and failed, and it's time to go to other cryptocurrencies that are capable of doing what um, individuals need for it to do for them to operate and have um, control of their uh, financial wealth. So that is it for this episode. Uh, next episode, we will be discussing all the other proposals, more minor proposals that have been put out there that you may or may not have heard of, but they're not as popular as Bitcoin Unlimited, Bitcoin Classic, Bitcoin XP, uh, the wall and the block size, discussing them and, and what that means for the discussion. So thank you for listening and to the moon. Thank you for listening. Please rate and review either through iTunes or Stitchers or any of the podcasting apps that you're currently using to listen to this show. Thank you and until next time. This has been a Herosha Shine Space Odyssey Network production.